There are many conspiracy theories surrounding aliens. That's not remotely surprising. Ever since the Roswell incident, we have been obsessed with aliens. That is not considering all the theories of extraterrestrial beings having visited ancient humans and alien imagery found in cave paintings and ancient artwork. Now, there's a new NASA study into the search for intelligent extraterrestrial life which details how future NASA missions could purposefully look for the techno-signatures of advanced alien civilizations. And there's one place that the scientists are most interested in. Our moon. Here's why experts believe that the moon is a UFO crash site that is hovering an ancient alien spacecraft. Orbit beyond the blue. The moon has been a favorite amongst alien enthusiasts since the Apollo missions. The theories that started floating around back then still have a ton of followers. One of the most popular ones is that Buzz Aldrin saw an alien ship of some kind during the Apollo 11 ride, and that he's been covering it up ever since, hiding that he's actually a UFO believer. To be fair, Aldrin did once allude to there being an unknown something tracing their path to the moon. We were smart enough to not say, uh, Houston, there's a light out there that's following us. So technically, it becomes an unidentified flying object. Some also believe that Neil Armstrong saw a fleet of UFOs on the moon, but that was based on a second-hand account allegedly by Armstrong. During the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, after Armstrong landed on the moon, NASA claims to have lost transmission for roughly two minutes. And in reportedly a secret message to NASA, he said, These babies were huge, sir. Enormous. Oh, God. You wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you there are other spacecrafts out here, lined up on the far side of the crater's edge. They are on the moon watching us. Of course, he never directly confirmed or denied it, and he mostly remained a private person throughout the rest of his lifetime. Did he actually see something he wasn't supposed to see, and hence remain silent throughout the rest of his career and lifetime? The scientists conducting the NASA study believe that the surface of the moon is ancient and unchanging. Evidence of any impacts or existing artifacts will be preserved for between millions and billions of years. During the Apollo 10 mission, a test run for the first mission to the moon, astronauts, among other things, took to testing various equipment. The stakes were high, since this was not a simulation, but real space. Much to the surprise of these astronauts, they heard a strange sort of whistling on their headphones that they later described as space music. Later, another NASA astronaut, Alan Bean, claimed he saw something shiny on the moon. He described it as shoe leather. While you expect space to be black and devoid of light in places, what was this shiny thing he saw? Could it have been glass? Whatever the reason for what he saw, there's not much of an explanation for this one. Sure, some are ridiculous, but some continue to plague the minds of people decades after, and new ones emerge every day. Not all of them belong to the Apollo era. Some are as latest as the 2020s. Is there some hidden truth behind these theories? Just imagine an alien craft coming to Earth and then going back dejected because we were too busy doing other things than to notice them. What if there are telltale signs of such a visit? Not on Earth, but on the Moon. A double crater formed due to the crash of a mystery spacecraft has piqued scientific interest. This crater has been found on the Moon. The eastern crater measures 18 meters across, and a western crater measures 16 meters across. Scientists expected a crater to be formed, as they knew an unknown piece of space junk crashed into the Moon last year. But here's the thing. No other previous crash of any space junk has formed twin craters like this one. NASA has said that the double crater was unexpected. The double crater was unexpected 
and may indicate that the rocket body had large masses at each end. Typically a spent rocket has mass concentrated at the motor end. The rest of the rocket stage mainly consists of an empty fuel tank. Since the origin of the rocket body remains uncertain, the double nature of the crater may indicate its identity. So is there a possibility of an alien brooding on the moon because their spacecraft crashed? In other news, researchers in 2014 discovered something massive lurking underneath the far side of the moon, what they termed as a mysterious blob. Imagine taking a pile of metal five times larger than the big island of Hawaii and burying it underground. That's roughly how much unexpected mass was detected. The mysterious structure sits at least 180 miles beneath the South Pole light can basin a colossal crater punched into the lunar landscape billions of years ago, when the moon's initially molten surface had cooled just enough for such impacts to leave a lasting mark. While we can't set out on a quest to understand the origins of this chunk of mass, take a look at this image. This false color image shows the topography on the far side of the moon, with highs in warm colors and lows in cool colors. A dashed circle indicates the zone of the excess dense mass under the South Pole Lycan Basin. Strange, right? The South Pole Lycan Crater is the biggest preserved impact crater that we know of in the solar system. It's almost 10 times the size of the Chicxulub Crater, which was created by the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs. This moon crater is massive, and now, the discovery of this odd mass only adds to the curiosity, especially since this crater and the nearby lunar South Pole are major potential targets for multiple future missions to the Moon. And scientists are already extremely eager to study the mass. Though the South Pole Aitken Basin is incredibly vast, it can't be seen from Earth because it is on the far side of the Moon, which faces away from us at all times. Instead, it was examined by a NASA spacecraft that sent back info on the small changes in gravity around the Moon that were being caused by this massive object. The GRAIL mission's duo of spacecraft Dub Deb and Flo orbited the Moon for nearly a year, precisely charting variations in the lunar gravitational field. Using this, the GRAIL team constructed the highest resolution gravity map of our little lunar companion yet which led to the reveal of the mystery mass. What is this mass? What is resting under the far side of the moon? What secrets does the moon actually hold? The team suggests two possibilities to explain the subsurface mass. One of the explanations of this extra mass is that the metal from the asteroid that formed this crater is still embedded in the moon's mantle. Scientists simulated a possible collision with an asteroid on a computer and found that some kinds of metal could settle into the layer between the crust and the core, where this chunk is still sitting. But they've maintained that only a more in-depth analysis will tell what it really is. Like we mentioned earlier, UFO conspiracies have been active and alive ever since the first Apollo missions especially since the world's two most famous astronauts, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have both allegedly claimed that UFOs were spotted as they headed to the moon. Neither of the men made any comment about aliens, just allegedly that some objects had been unidentified during their mission, and Armstrong's claims were made via second-hand information. But that much was enough to encourage decades of speculation about aliens on the moon. The Moon is the only world besides Earth ever visited by humans. By studying the Moon, scientists can piece together Earth's origin story, and perhaps maybe even find proof of existence of the third kind. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. But nonetheless, there's so much we still don't understand about our natural satellite. Which makes this a huge area for research that will benefit space research and future exploration. With Artemis, we will get a step closer to knowing our moon a little bit better. In the meantime, keep watching to learn about the real reason why NASA stopped its moon missions after Apollo for almost five decades. The last manned mission to the moon was Apollo 17, 
taking place between 7 and the 19th of December 1972. It was a 12-day mission and broke multiple records such as the longest spacewalk, the longest lunar landing and the largest lunar samples brought back to Earth. The brief history of our first stint on the moon kick starts in 1962, with then-President John F. Kennedy's historic speech. The race to land humans on the moon was announced by him in a public announcement at Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas. The speech is now known as the We Choose to Go to the Moon speech. In it, Kennedy mentioned his commitment to getting a human to walk on the moon by the end of the decade. And this will be done in the decade of the 60s. It may be done while some of you are still here at school at this college and university. It will be done during the terms of office of some of the people who sit here on this platform. But it will be done, and it will be done before the end of this decade. When the moon landing took place seven years later in 1969, Kennedy's goal had been achieved and his deadline met. However, with the goal achieved, NASA faced large funding cuts and severe backlash, making the future of the Apollo missions untenable. There had originally been 20 Apollo missions planned, but technological and research-based missions were not seen as important as the achievement of the moon landing itself, and the final three missions were cancelled. The social and global impact of the Apollo 11 moon landing mission in July of 1969 was massive. What followed were six other trips to the massive rock. Only one of these missions failed, and a grand total of 12 men traversed the moon's surface. Two years before the final manned mission to the moon, Apollo 17 took place in December 1972. It was announced that all further trips to the moon had been cancelled. The biggest reason had to do with funding. There was no denying that it was ridiculously expensive. The total cost of the Apollo program, which ran from 1960 to 1973, caused the United States a whopping $25.8 billion, adjusted for inflation, that number sits at a staggering $257 billion. Then there was the question of waning enthusiasm for the program. Often the object or topic of human fascination tends to shift. We tend to get over things pretty quickly, and constantly going to the moon didn't seem like the crazy challenge it was for the Apollo 11 mission once we had done it several times. But, half a decade later, human beings will soon walk on the moon again, if all things go NASA's way. If everything goes as planned, a future mission could land astronauts on the moon in 2025. Several factors are now driving NASA to get astronauts back to the moon for the first time in more than 50 years. One is a long-running desire to get human beings on Mars. The Artemis missions will test some of the technology and logistics required to go about landing humans on the Red Planet. If the future of humanity is indeed spreading across the solar system, then logistically, the first stop has to be our own satellite, the Moon. The space race is one of the proudest moments in American history. But was it practical? Was there any reason for us to go to the moon other than the fact that it was an astounding accomplishment? Probably not, but our species found a way to get off the planet we were put on, and to land an expertly crafted vessel on the giant nighttime floating rock we had been staring at for some 300,000 years. Beyond the Blue